a developed sense of taste and smell could help the baby take her first sips of breast milk once she's born. Just like the amniotic fluid, breast milk contains a similar selection of tastes and smells from the mother's food. If the newborn baby is already familiar with these flavors and likes the taste, this may encourage her to feed. This scan shows a 24-week-old fetus opening and closing her eyes. The eyes are fully formed halfway through the pregnancy, but seeing is the one sense she can't experience until she's born. It's too dark in the womb. It's possible that some very bright light, direct sunlight for example, could penetrate into the uterus and the fetus may be able to detect a faint glow. But the uterine wall is so thick, buried under a protective layer of skin and fat, that most of the time the fetus evolves in total darkness. While there may be nothing to see in the womb, opening and closing the eyes helps the fetus develop the blinking reflex, a reflex that stays with us for life to protect our eyes from foreign objects, keep them moist, and shield them from bright light. At 25 weeks, the eyes grow intricate lashes but there's one detail that may not fully develop no matter how much time the fetus spends inside the womb, the color of the eyes. Some pigments need light to form properly and the baby's eyes may change color during the first months of life. Babies of Asian or African descent are usually born with dark brown or dark gray eyes that mature to deep brown or black. A Caucasian baby almost always has blue eyes in the womb, even if they change to green or brown after birth. Geneticists once believed that a single gene determined eye color but new research shows that several genes are responsible. So it's impossible to predict just from looking at the parent's eyes what color the baby's eyes will be. At three months old, the fetus's most developed sense is hearing. The fetus may be completely surrounded by amniotic fluid, but because sound travels through fluid about four times faster than it does in air, she has plenty to hear. The first sounds the fetus hears as her ears start picking up vibrations at 13 weeks are the gurgles and rumbles made by her mother's body. A succession of hiccups, burps, bubbles, sloshes and slurps marks the passage of food liquid and air in, out and through the maze of passages and tubes just inches from the baby's ears. The fetus also makes her own noises as she kicks and swishes in the amniotic fluid. 
she can also hear the competing thud of heartbeats, her own racing at twice the speed of her mother's, both her constant companions during her time in the womb. The fetus can also hear sounds from the world outside, conversations, loud noises, and music. The walls of the womb, together with the abdomen, act to filter out most of the high frequencies. All sounds reach the fetus distorted, but higher sounds are more muffled. Only the lower bass notes of a piece of music have much impact. Voices sound distorted too. Vowels are generally lower in pitch than consonants, so the fetus only hears the melody of speech without the percussion of consonants. That's not like her at all. The sound of the mother's voice is different from any other since it travels directly through the fluids of the body. She's trying for a baby. <laughs> oh. This may help the baby develop the unique relationship it has with its mother. Excellent. Good luck. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Thanks, Sarah. Give us a hand. Other voices, like the father's, must pass through air, then fluid and may not cut through the general background noise. See a little face there? The loudest sound a fetus will ever hear may come during an ultrasound scan. It's impossible to hear the actual ultrasound waves. They are at far too high a frequency to affect the human ear. But the ultrasound can cause secondary waves in the amniotic fluid that the baby can hear. To produce finely detailed images, ultrasound probes fire a rapid succession of pulses, each lasting less than one millionth of a second. The rapid switching on and off of these pulses can cause waves in the fluid, which sound like high-pitched tapping. If the probe is pointed directly at the baby's ear, it can sound as loud as a subway train. In normal circumstances, there's no need for the scanning probe to go anywhere near the ear. But if the baby becomes at all unhappy, she can easily wriggle away from the sound. Just as in this 4D scan, doctors have observed fetuses grimace and frown as they manipulate the fetus through the mother's abdomen. All part of the delicate expansion of the senses. During the final trimester, the fetus prepares for life outside the womb, away from her comforting cocoon and its built-in life support. Many of the crucial tricks and skills she needs to survive on the outside are innate reflexes that she develops inside the womb. 